This piece is the auto leveling probe. It's called that because when your print starts, it detects the corners of the print bed and then determines the Z height. It's also called an induction sensor because it detects the metal bed through induction. It's positioned next to the hot end, but the hot end is actually a little bit lower. The tip of the hot end gets very close to the bed, while the induction sensor is a little bit higher. You need the auto leveling probe or induction sensor and two M3 6mm screws. Since this sensor essentially operates as the Z end stop, I'm going to label it with the letter Z. Add a label to yours if it isn't labeled already. The probe has some nuts and washers on it. Go ahead and remove those. The nuts and washers will not be reattached at any point, so you can just set them aside. This piece holds in place the auto leveling probe. You put a screw through this top hole into this top spot here. Then you lay the probe over top. And you're going to bend this piece into a circle. You're going to wrap it around the probe. When it sits in a circle, you're going to put a screw through this opposite side here, which will now be on the right-hand side, through this hole, and into this last spot here. It's important you position the probe at the right height. You want to make sure that the probe is higher than the tip of the hot end nozzle. If it's lower than the hot end, whenever you go to calibrate this, the probe will touch the bed first. You want it the other way around. You want to make sure that the hot end is lower. Ideally, point that probe wire towards the back. You'll gather it with the other wires behind the extruder. It doesn't necessarily affect you if it's not pointed directly back, but it does make things easier. Here's what the piece looks like once you wrap it around the probe and reattach it on the other side. Again, you're bending it around in a circle and attaching it on the right-hand side with two screws. You really want to get this piece pliable by bending it into a circle before you go to install it. You want the side with two holes on the right-hand side and the side with one hole on the left-hand side as you work this into a circular shape. I had to really work mine into a circular shape for about four or five minutes before I felt confident that it was going to be easy to install. The last thing you need to do is actually grab a set of pliers and bend the last hole back the other direction. This will give you that turn so that you can actually put the last screw in place. Put an M3 6mm screw in the first hole. Place the probe over top. You want the wire of the probe towards the back. Wrap the piece around the probe and attach the second M3 6mm screw in the last hole. This step is very difficult and if you didn't flex the piece enough, it won't work. So you may have to detach everything and flex the piece some more. I haven't tightened that last screw all the way yet. I can wiggle the probe back and forth and lift it up higher than the nozzle tip of the hot end. Now that's a good height, I can tighten that screw in place. If your probe is slanted or moves back and forth like this, your problem is that the top screw hasn't been tightened down all the way yet. So straighten out the probe and tighten the top screw. Looking at this piece from the side, that last screw does line up with the smooth rod. However, the thickness of this part is larger than the 6mm length of the screw, so unless you use the wrong screw length, it really shouldn't drag. This whole assembly should still slide as smooth as it did before, so pull it back and forth. As long as you don't feel any drag, you're ready to move on.